Happy New Year, everybody. Tonight, we're going back to October 2006 to hear Thule read from his 1959 poetry book, Snow Job. Take it away, Thule. So here we are back again sooner than expected with uh, me, Thule, reading from a book that's, uh, that was printed in 1959 and has poems going back to 1946. And if this is 2006, that's, my God, can it be a 60 years? So I, I'm not familiar with some of these poems, and I've looked at them again. I haven't looked at some of them for decades. And uh, some of them I remember well, some I don't. And uh, it seems to be my glasses are not clear. But I hope I can look back to a little clearly. And uh, it's a question of how much you rehearse when you uh, recite or perform. And I think. Sometimes I like to think you don't have to do it at all, but that isn't true. And, uh, uh, but you can also over-rehearse and lose all spontaneity and get screwed up in different ways. So this is a combination of everything. And um, this first poem doesn't have a title, which can be a disadvantage because uh, I noticed that I use in kind of ele uh, too often an elevated poetical and quotes language. And I find words here that, I, that I've only used once in these poems that some uh, of whom I've forgotten the meaning. She says, don't tell anybody. But I have checked them out again. So anyway, <coughs> here goes. What, part one. Choosing not to know. Choosing not to know pain. Flicked like a bug from the collar. He became a scholar of the certain. Uh, I've also uh, decided that um, many of these poems are a longing for love. And that's romantic love, but it's also a human love, or a love between uh, brother and sister, and wife and husband, and grandchild, and, ch and, uh, grand and grandparents, and humans, and animals. You know, love, universal love. Choosing not to know pain flicked like a bug from the collar. He became a scholar of the certain. Oh, precise geraniums punched from that vermilion typewriter. How deftly he spaced between his thousand grades. Bright beauties, die-cast leaves. A tempered tapestry of these days' tabloids. <coughs> Boy, these days' tabloids are really something. Two. Well, that's part two of part one. How the high vase of neon cruised, I misspelled cruised, those morning hours won by vertigo one, brimming to a nooning tension, surfaced hue done, writ fluorescent on the slanting sidewalks of the night. Whatever that means. I am come to shiver that world. Prepare, prepare a catafalque of lilies. You don't know what catafalque means. It's a um, ornate casket and a casket procession. And there bubbled in light on the terrible tower of the times. I think they still do that. They run, they run, uh, or some, some other in, in uh, Radio City. They have a flash of the news uh, or the news dispatches uh, in uh, running lights, like the, uh, the thing on your lower, uh, the lower part of your TV. <coughs> and there bubbled in light on the terrible Tower of the Times, whose high election meant 
whose death? What definite knife, which perfect thrust above all other things, what single thing one must? Whose high election meant whose death? Jesus, you mean when you vote for a president or an emperor? No, you don't vote for the emperor. For the prime minister, you're voting for someone's death? That's a pretty horrible thought, but it might be true. It might be true. So does that mean we're all war criminals? I deny it, Your Honor. Your Honor? Two. Or two. Expert in the subtleties of denial. He envisions sacred sculptures in the uncut, the tobacco-shaded wood, and out of throbbing buried streams, and out of throbbing buried streams, pristine wells of good, and gush them toward his, and gush them toward his Sunday soul, as he knew he should. But Sunday never ever came as he knew it would. Three, the long years became the single moment. I have not traveled, he thought, but have remained myself. Now's emptiness alone describes the fullness that I sought. And only longing wings the birds of our desire and did not leap the hobo train nor walk in London in the rain, nor scale the Athens of the mind, nor drink the sun in Carmel's wind. The thing I most regret, he thought, is what I sought I have not sought. And what I still must do, he said, to find out love before I'm dead. Four. But I am here and you are there, and stars are falling everywhere, and what has not been done is done, and winter's melting in the sun. Oh, is winter melting in the sun? And what hate ends has love begun? Fall comes fell to those who care. Spring rips the throat of those that dare. And this is the envoy of the last, the last letter, right? The last message. Let those that dare remember. When all the bugles of the world have stopped and the sun rolls to its station and stars desire no thing, desire no thing more, then still will they cry, Beloved, beloved, where art thou? Where art thou? And who will answer? And who shall say, Lord, Lord, I am here. Uh, this one is more placed and more and less uh, mushy. Um, Rutgers Square Revisited. Rutgers Square is one of the centers of the Lower East Side Jewish settlement. You know, the immigrant settlement which started around 1880 for Jews and for Italians. Before that, there were Germans and Irish. And it's where the, uh, what's that East Side settlement? Uh, there's a settlement house there. The Forwards building was there. The building is still there, but the Forwards has gone uptown, as, as you've seen. Anyway, Rutgers Square, old center of Jewish culture and uh, life. And culture, I mean, in a broad sense, not just uh, literary culture or artistic culture. Rutgers Square revisited. <coughs> It's in a park, too. There's a park there, and there's a library, and it's a, a, a very nice square. It's near Seward Park High School. I guess it's Seward Park Park. One. Rutgers Square revisit. When I heard the subway in the park, I shivered. 
Rain in the soughing, dark as a sweeter sound. Oh, those singeing sycamores and gardens of garbage blow and blow between the projects, row on row. I found a paper yarmulke in streets my Zeta walked as lover of the Lord. On East Broadway, the Latin queers go gay. And truth has pressed the Varheit sour grapes away. The Varheit was the first Jewish anarchist newspaper, probably going back to the 1880s. Um, there were Yiddish radical papers in um, London and in um, New York, and uh, probably in War I'm sure in Warsaw and uh, maybe Kiev. On East Broadway, the Latin queers go gay, and truth has pressed the Varheit sour grapes away. We smile. We drink a sweeter wine today. Oh, the cloven foot of time has unkiked many a kosher lass. Our eternal youth has passed, sunk as Sheba's trembling fleet beneath the sighs of forgiveness. I never thought that love could undo so many. Two. When the king of the ghetto moved uptown, he put aside his horseradish crown, intoning, Our locks on both your houses. Live and let live whoever can. Oh yeah, how should I know? Am I a philosopher? Who told you that a people must play out its evil style? Judge each man as each man is. For this little while I'd be myself and take what good this poor life give. God grant to prophets of alarm an unwitherable arm, an iron heart that still can be. Who seeks the shock of love must not go gloved. Three. They say that Isaac Bobble, Isaac Bobble was uh, probably the greatest uh, Jewish Russian writer of the uh, 20th century, in my opinion. He wrote fiction, he wrote short stories. His most famous book is Red Cavalry. He was a supporter of the revolution and he wrote, a, he was a reporter. Um, for the, for the Bolshevik government, uh, and he rode with the Cossacks, non-Jewish uh, Red Army people. Uh, that was a terrible time when uh, 11 to 13 capitalist countries of the world, including France, England, the United States, Czechos the Czechs, the Poles, the French, well, the French had a revolution in their fleet there, were trying to suppress the Bolshevik Revolution, which uh, I'm a pacifist myself, but it, if they hadn't oppressed it so much, it could have become a much more wonderful thing. Instead, it turned into uh, Stalin's nightmare. They say that Isaac Bobbles, oh, by the way, Isaac Bobble was arrested by Stalin. He disappeared, and it was uh, it was later established that he died somewhere uh, during uh, World War II because uh, if you question Stalin's uh, mustache, you could be killed. Uh, he was a paranoid maniac and uh, destroyed whatever uh, chance the Soviet Union had to become something better and something admirable. They say that Isaac Bobble's risen from the dead a bit. You know, they found some of his uh, earlier writings that had been suppressed. But this is not Odessa. He, he came from Odessa, which is a very uh, interesting town on the Black Sea. Originally a Greek, a Greek city and an international city. Uh, uh, mostly Russia was very provincial. Uh, they flirted with the French, uh, 
French culture, the upper class did, but uh, that's what's called the Paris of uh, Russia. No, but this is, but this is not Odessa, nor ever was. Remember when our begging Jews received from Peg Leg Pete the democratic right to slaves? Oh, those hypocrites, those pious knaves. That's an interesting story that I found once and then tried to trace in many uh, histories of uh, New York City and many Jewish histories. Peg Leg Pete is Peter Stuyvesant, who was an anti-Semite, by the way. But uh, Dutch New York, the Dutch East India Company, there were many Jews, there were many Jews in, in, uh, in Holland. And some of them were stockholders in the uh, Dutch East India Company, or West, I'm sorry, Dutch West India Company. It was an East India Company too. They captured Indonesia, right? Until they owned it until recently. Um, and what's the problem? Is there a problem the light, behind the that? light, the light just went in. Hi. It doesn't matter what Hi. light went in. Okay, the sun. Yeah. Uh, I don't think we can control the sun yet. <laughs> okay. But uh, right. uh, Bush is trying. All right. Here's the sun again. Here, here it comes again. Okay. Uh, I think the uh, viewers will survive uh, some light and dark. Okay. So when the Jews, the first Jews came uh, to New York after uh, uh, being, uh, um, they were expelled from Spain, or well, left Spain, during the Inquisition. A lot of them went to the Netherlands. Some went, I believe, from the Netherlands, where they were Portuguese Jews, too, they were smoked. Anyway, some, they, the first Jews uh, went to, landed in Brazil, didn't like it there, couldn't make any, uh, couldn't make a deal. They went on to the West Indies, and they landed in New York. But anyway, by, uh, this, I guess, is the 17th century already. It's, uh, yeah, 17th century. That's when the first Jews came here, I guess. And uh, after a while, they established themselves here, and uh, only, they were denied a lot of rights. Uh, they were discriminated against. Uh, well, they didn't get to vote in England even until the 19th century, or all others. So uh, they petitioned Peter Stuyvesant for all their uh, equal rights with the other white folks. And they petitioned for the right to own slaves, like any decent right, uh, white folk. And if I could go on and on like this, we Jews are not saints, you know. But uh, being persecuted like uh, persecuted people generally are better, treat other people, other nations, other cultures better. But uh, maybe the Jews in Israel haven't quite learned that lesson. Some of them have. But anyway, they petitioned, and I think they got the right he granted them the right to own slaves. It was a great triumph of justice, human justice. And it's a hidden, it's hidden in the histories. You can't find it. I found it once. All right, so if you can find it, contact me somehow. All right, so uh, the references. No, nor ever was. This is not Odessa. Remember when our begging Jews received from Peg Leg Pete their democratic right to slaves? Oh, those hypocrites. Those pious knaves. And this is not Salonika. Salonika in Greece was a very interesting city. They were also uh, Jews there from Spain who spoke the 16th century Spanish, Ladino, an another Jewish language that very few people speak. And the Jews of Salonika, most of them were stevedores. It's a, uh, it's a port, it was a port city and uh, it was very unusual, uh, although later in Eastern Europe, of course, you had plenty of Jewish workers, proletarians, wage slaves. But uh, uh, the Jews of Salonika were known for being stevedores, and they were strong, and uh, they were working class. And they must have been radicals. They must have been communists there, too, or socialists at that time. And uh, the Nazis took care of them. 
they wiped out uh, the uh, when they invaded Greece they they sent a lot of Salonican Jews to the gas chambers and this is not Salonica nor show redhead Jews with eyes the color of Aphrodite's veins blue-eyed Jews sail again the holy Yam Gadol that means great sea the Mediterranean between transported Spains and this is not Salonica New York nor show redhead Jews with eyes the color of Aphrodite's veins sail again the holy Yom Gadol between transported Spain. But this is simply Sodom, Sodom, Sodom by the sea. The bomb, perhaps, will kill us all. This was like a fear 50 years ago, and then it disappeared for a while, now it's come back. Now there are what, 14, 15, 25 nations with the bomb? 50, who'll make it 50? I got 45, 45, 45, 60. I put in there, I'm in so Armenian. All right, American, I mean. But this is simply Sodom by the sea. The bomb perhaps will kill us all. Our salt is iodized. We know the free falls laws. And David's shield is held on high, is held in screaming eagle's claws. The American Eagle is a uh, copper fight? No, it's a, it eats carrion. Anyway, uh, they never asked the bird whether it wanted to be the American bird, did they? All right, but you know, all nations could go to hell as far as I'm concerned. Uh, you know, and, and a state, what distinguishes a state is that it has the legal right it has the right to kill you. It, uh, the, uh, it has a monopoly of violence. So they can all go to hell except Cave 64. Even Cave 64 could go to hell. Because Cave 63 is just as good. As a matter of fact, Cave 63 has more air holes. So let them all go to hell except Cave 63. Remember that song, uh, Let Them All Go to Hell Except Cave 64, but what if you live in Cave 63? All right, so now here, here we end. I guess I have to sober up here with this. Pick one page for an ancient song. Who loved right did wrong. I'll go and sob with all the rest in white gloves beat my fur-lined breast. I was afraid like all the rest. I was weak. I did my best. But as the saying goes, sometimes the best is not too good. How much time do we have? Uh, five minutes. All right, uh, hmm. you know what I think I'll do? A few small ones and I'll come back to the long one later. Right. All right, uh, this is the height and it's for L. I took a hike to Hoboken once. How in Hoboken with this with this woman. Children of great cities, we try to find egress from the waxen mind, but met instead dark and shrunken mummies, oh, bright bubbles, minor dead. This was old Hoboken, which was 50 years ago, was a uh, working class city. I guess Frankie comes from there, Sinatra. Hoboken today is entirely different. I don't know if it's better. It's a yupp yuppieville because it's close to the financial district and uh, there's a lot of new housing. And it's a short trip to the uh, dust fields of the World Trade Center where you can get uh, whatever this lung disease you prefer. 
<clears throat> All right, so, and now, this is from, uh, from uh, a longer poem. And I always like to say this is from a shorter poem. No, but this is from a longer poem. The Ballad of the Rienzi Ladies, and this is for G. All of you, he said, this is another one of those mushy romantic poems. All of you, he said, taking her around and kissing her on the belly. Everything you've ever experienced is in your holy body. That's true. Everything you do has an effect on your body, for good or bad, or anything. And now, and now I have changed you into a poem, he said, and I have caught you forever, and your breasts have become O's, and your nipple a perfect period. Your thighs have turned to V, and in between an exclamation point. And now I have you. I have you forever, and I have all your sound. And I've changed all your lovely and your evanescent smells, wafted by the tinkle of typewriter bells, through the rank ribbons of the heart's dark desire, to the smell of paper and to ink, to ashes and to fire. And all your silences and all the lines I shall not write on all the nights that shall be different from tonight. We don't have time to do another poem now, but uh, we'll be back to haunt you some other time. Um, do you like poetry? Anyone could, uh, you know, it's no big deal. Everyone is a poet. And, and there's poetry in all the language. And uh, you can try writing it, writing it yourself, and uh, it's no big deal, and uh, it's just excited language, okay? And prose is uh, dull poetry, dull language, or language that just uh, conveys other things besides itself. Or you know, the man, you know the man who was writing prose all his life and he didn't realize it? Yes. So uh, we'll see you again, or hear you again, or you'll see us again as time goes by. What beat clubs did you read this at? What? What beat clubs, like the Rienzi? You mentioned the Rienzi. Tell us about the Rienzi. Oh, uh, we can't. Oh, the Next Rienzi? Time. We have... Next time. We got what? Are we over? Yeah, we're, 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 right. we're done. All right. Yeah, I should have mentioned the Rienzi. Right, that was good enough. Yeah, I don't think I should. I'm, I'm recording black. What?